Good morning, everybody. Uh, today I'm going to show you how to make a very traditional Irish dinner. It's called bacon and cabbage. So come on over here and I'll show you what I've done. I have my ham here in uh, just a pot of cold water. If you think about it, it's probably good to steep your ham in uh, water the night before. I didn't think about it, so it doesn't really matter. Um, I'm going to put it on a high heat. I'm going to put the lid on, bring it to the boil, and then I'm going to turn it down and simmer it for about, that's quite a big ham. I'll probably give it an hour and a half, maybe two hours, okay? So that's our ham there. I've also got my potatoes peeled over here, and I'm going to cook them and mash them later. And this is my cabbage here, which I've kind of started cutting in half, just in case you don't know how to prepare a cabbage. I've taken off some of the really uh, old outer leaves like, like that and thrown them away. And then you come in, this is what you call the heart of the cabbage, and you cut in in a triangle shape like that, just to get the really hard part out. See there, that's gonna be very tough and it won't, be edible. So you're trying to get that really big heart out. It's not coming out very well today, but anyway. And then so cut in like this. And that's how it usually comes out. So in other words, don't have any big woody bits in there. And then come along and take off those. See the outer leaves? Sometimes they're a little bit kind of wilted. Just pull them off. Pop this back on here and just slice in like that nice and thin okay and what I'm going to do is have everything prepared I have my potatoes prepared I prepared them last night actually I had my ham ready there to go and now I have my cabbage that I'm going to keep over here and have it ready I'm going to do the same with this when my ham is boiled I'm going to keep the water from my ham and I'm going to cook my cabbage in that. So whenever my ham is cooked, I'll be back to you. Cooking away nicely there for actually two hours. And I just wanted to, I'm sorry if I'm teaching people how to do something they already know, but I'm just gonna assume uh, there's a lot of younger people out there who don't know how to make this kind of dinner. And this is especially for you. So I'm just gonna cut off the wrapper that's been around it to help keep its shape. Don't take that off before you cook or it'll lose its shape. Okay, and I'm gonna peel that back and just discard it. Now, this the fat that's on top here, um, this is okay, There's not it's not very thick and coarse, but if it's thick and coarse, you should wait until it cools down and literally just peel back the thick and coarse stuff. But this is not, so I'm gonna just show you, there isn't a lot of fat on this, but I'm just gonna show you how to score it if you wanted to and put some cloves in there. Again, now there's not a lot of space for me to do that, but you'll get the idea. And you're, you're ending up with little squares, okay? So then you get your cloves and you just put one in each little square like that. Does that make sense? So this is actually my favorite dinner and Liam loves it as well. And uh, it's just one of those really traditional dinners that just makes you feel grounded or something like that. So um, I'm going to show you how to make it a little bit different because I use a little a glaze over this and I'm going to pop it into the oven. So you can just continue all the way around there like that. And I put a couple of knobs of butter in here, just like that, dot them all around. And then... I have 175 grams of brown sugar here, which I'm going to try and pack a little bit on top, but don't worry if it doesn't stay, um, because it, 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 when it goes into the oven, it'll melt and it'll fall to the bottom anyway. Just going to wash my hands here. And then I take a piece, uh, maybe about, depends how thin or thick you like your sauce. My kids love it nice and thick and syrupy. So I don't use too much juice left over from the cooking of the meat. Maybe two ladlefuls. And I'm not gonna put it on the top because it'll just wash all the uh, sugar off. And I'm gonna pop that into an oven now. Woo! 
try and keep it up. Um, about uh, 180 uh, for the amount of time that it'll take to cook your potatoes and your cabbage, okay? So I'm gonna pop that into my oven now and I'm gonna show you what to do with your cabbage. Using the same water that you cooked your ham in, you just pile all your cabbage in there. And the reason you do this is that that water is really flavoursome and it's going to, um, the cabbage is going to absorb all that flavour because sometimes cabbage, let's face it, it's just not nice and, and kids don't like it. But when it's cooked in this, they're all looking for seconds. Win-win. If you have baby potatoes as well, you could pop your washed baby potatoes in there and cook them with it and they also absorb that lovely salty kind of flavour. I don't have baby potatoes so I'm just going to mash. So you put the lid on here and you cook it, bring it to the boil and simmer it for about 10-15 minutes until it's nice and soft. Okay, we'll be right back. Beautiful glazed ham. As you can see, uh, it's nice and brown. Ha about uh, 20 minutes into it being in the oven, I just did this. You know, I just tried to glaze it over the top. And if some of the sugar sticks to the top, just pat it down like that. And once you pour that over, it'll disappear. So you leave that to rest for about 10 minutes before you start carving, because if you carve into that now, it'll just fall apart. And over here is the cabbage. Can you see the cabbage there? And it's cooked. If you want it a little bit more fine than it is there, just chop it up in your pot like this, back and forth like that. Okay, and that's basically it. That's delicious bacon and cabbage, Irish style with a twist. Thanks all, thank you all for watching. I hope you get to enjoy this beautiful sunshine. God bless.